I guess to start with, our urgent care services in rural are not being taken away. What this um, proposal and consultation is about is about how we best reconfigure and replace the current offer, ensuring that everyone who needs urgent care services receives it in the right setting. Why are we, why are we delivering this? Why are we taking this forward? Um, well, there's national guidance been published by NHS England that we've shared before. Um, back in February 2017, NHS England published the intention to improve urgent and emergency care. As part of their, their intention and proposals, they wanted to introduce the rollout of standardised urgent treatment centres and to end the confusion by establishing as much commonality as possible. Um, NHS England recognised the, the national challenge of accident and emergency departments, the growing demographics, and felt there was a real requirement to look at urgent care nationally about how we improve that offer. They also recognised um, the confusion. Um, many, many people from down the country were voicing to them um, about the, the variation of the local urgent care offer. Different walking centres, different GP led units, different minor injury units up and down the country. So their real intention to improve and standardise urgent care and introducing urgent treatment centres as part of that development. But our proposals are not just about a mandate, they are about how we improve the local offer in rural. And we've just tried to summarise there what these proposals, this consultation, describes as part of that local offer. So it is about introducing an urgent treatment centre for rural and um, creating a single front door by placing it on the Arrow Park site as part of accident and emergency. And actually um, having some capital investment to really redesign so we've got a sustainable service and building going forward. Trying to improve the assessment area sitting behind the emergency department, improving access to diagnostics, really creating a single front door this is GP led by the, at the urgent treatment centre, primary community care services, streamlining and making sure that A&E is only there for those people who really need to be in A&E and helping with that overcrowding and that pressure that is currently being felt. Supporting that urgent treatment centre, our local offer, uh, we want to see a consistent offer that addresses the current variation in the four localities across rural. So West Wirral, South Wirral, Birkenhead and Wallasey. And that's basically offer, that, that offer we want to see consist of three interrelated um, areas, three, three related elements. The first one being same day um, urgent access to GP and nurse appointments. Those will be bookable and contactable by the phone. The second element being um, continued um, access locally to wound and dressing care but rather than walk in, actually have those bookable at a time to suit to you individually. And having a um, bookable and a walk-in option for children's services 0 to 19. And in a moment I'll share the activity about why we suggested we continue with that. The proposals we put on the table do take account of local demography and population need. So we will be uh, waiting the appointments and services available. Um, for example, we recognise there are high levels of deprivation in places like Birkenhead and we will absolutely take account of those when we look at the range of appointments and services that are needed in, in the different locality areas. <coughs> so moving us on then to the drivers for change, just picking up on some of the, uh, the, the comments I made a moment ago. Um, a and &E pressures. Some of the most poorly people, um, patients are waiting long, having long waits in A&E. Um, when I go up there, and there's, co there's colleagues you'll hear from shortly, um, it's not unusual to see people queuing in a corridor on trolleys. People 85, 90 years of age, waking, waiting one acceptable length of time to be seen by a clinician, releasing those ambulances. Um, very often we've had ambulance turnaround times, two and a half to three hours totally unacceptable uh, with people at risk in the community waiting to have ambulances released uh, to go in and deal with the next 999 call. And if you've experienced uh, recently turning up at A&E, uh, you will not, it's not unusual to have to wait in excess of the four hour standard 
um, to, be, to be seen and treated. So we know that the current offer in active emergency needs, needs addressing and we need to look at how we best reconfigure our resources and services to improve that element of the urgent care offer. The four hour uh, performance standard um, 95% of patients being uh, treated, seen and treated within four hours. Uh, we have had as, as low uh, performance as 49.3% in September, and recently in the last few days it's dipped to 50%. Uh, despite all our efforts, despite us having um, significant investment in, in the community, and despite us as a system trying to address that performance, um, it's, it's unacceptable. And currently we rank 120 out of 133 acute trusts for that four hour standard. Clearly demonstrating the need that we need to have something different on the table. Locally we need to address the variation. Uh, you'll, you are familiar with the fact that we have uh, three walking centres and three uh, minor injury units offering different hours of opening, a slightly variation of services. And they're, they're summarised, appreciate it's difficult to read at the back, but that, those hours of opening are, are summarised on, on the slide. Um, those services are nurse-led. Um, and when we have a look at the variation in, in, in inequity, um, the top right box there, um, 6%, 3 of 51 GP um, practices across rural account for 15% of activity in the walking centres and minor injuries. 10%, um, that's 5 out of the 51, um, account for 22.5% and so on. You can see those figures. For the co-located -lo co sites where we have the minor injuries um, based within uh, on the same site as general practice, 6 of those 51 practices account for 22.7%. So we've got huge variation across rural. West rural in particular um, is probably um, the worst well served. So we've got an opportunity here, a real opportunity to make a difference to the lives of people in rural by making sure that we've got a consistent, sustainable offer going forward. So moving us on to communication and engagement. Um, our public engagement dates back as far as 2009 and in, in the case of a change that's on the website and has been circulated to members, Section 5 clearly describes some of the messages and themes that were going back as far as 2009. In summary, they were things around people being unclear about the urgent care service offered. Common reason for attending walk-in and minor injury units was that people couldn't get to see a GP when they needed one. A high proportion of people felt that urgent care should be open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And there was a recurring theme that people attended a &E because they couldn't get an urgent appointment or didn't know where else to go. So those themes that we've tried to address in the, the options that are on the table go back as far as 2009. Since then, we have consistently engaged with the public and stakeholders, uh, most recently as part of this consultation process that we're in the middle of. We also recognise the importance of engaging with the stakeholders and did a number of workshops back in 2016 and 17 with major stakeholders. The bottom left of that slide, and people can read it, just shares some common themes that came from one of those workshops um, and that gives you a bit of an extract of some of the findings. A number of providers were in, were in that work, that were in the workshop are actually here today and have been part of shaping up our thinking of these proposals. So we have genuinely used the outputs from the sessions and from the uh, messages from NHS England and what we've heard locally loud and clear and really looked at the activity to inform um, our, our proposal that we've put forward. Just a few points on our governance process. As part of the consultation, we have been subject to the NHS England uh, change assurance pro process. And we've worked with them for several months now, um, touching base, and they have had scrutiny of all the work that we have done to date. And we needed their approval in order to move forward with the consultation. And we've had approval on the communication literature as well. Um, the second point is that in terms of our internal governance, the executive management team has had regular reports. Um, an oversight of the, uh, the activity assumptions, the working groups and the development of the proposals and the consultation process. And we have kept governing body and the Joint Strategy Commissioning Board close.
close uh, on this work as well. Now, finally, just to recognise that there will be an independent review as part of this process by NHS England's Clinical Senate. They are independent with a number of clinicians um, and there is a dedicated day on the 26th of November where that group of clinicians and independent people will come out and engage with executive teams, visit the services, look at our activity and assumptions in case of change and make, put forward um, their views and any recommendations that we will duly need to consider as part of this consultation process. So just a little bit more about the consultation itself. We wanted to ensure that this consultation was meaningful. And so, as I've said, we have genuinely tried to use and, cons and consider all the feedback from previous engagement uh, sessions, such as the workshops, and consider the activity available to us to make an informed decision about what we put on the table. Um, I'm not going to go through this in, in, in detail, but um, we're aware, and most all this is on the website, we have a detailed comprehensive case of change, which provides information and summary of all that work to date. Um, we, we clearly are in consultation, um, and so we are engaging with the public. We have a, a number of public meetings, um, which we're still uh, in the middle of. We have done a postcard drop uh, to each household. Uh, there are posters that have gone available to GP practices, my, uh, walking centres, minor injury units, leisure centres, one-stop shops, etc. Um, to try and advertise where people can um, go to for the information and how they can complete the survey. Uh, we have driven the message through social media and so to date we've had 178,000 Twitter and Facebook um, reach. Um, so, a number of things, that's, that's just a snapshot of some of the things we're trying to do to reach the public to get their views. We do have a frequently asked questions on the website and we regularly weekly update that so that people have a consistent response to some of the queries that we're being asked. Um, we have take, undertaken quality impact assessments, they're also on our website. Um, and I think it's really important to acknowledge that Healthwatch Wirral and a number of patient representatives have been engaged and working with us as part of this process and they've put an independent challenge and 